Hey everybody, welcome to Anarchy, the podcast about anime with two brothers. I'm Ben. And I'm watching fucking baseball. Well, good. I God have to bleep damn that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Add more work for me. Good. Have your Mariners even played yet? Yeah, they're playing right now. Okay, just checking. Well, before we talk about All You Need Is Kill, the extended anime, and then more baseball, what have you been up to since last we spoke? Uh, I've worked. I've actually had to be in the office all all, all week this week. Oh, Yeah, Hard I life. agree. Hard life. Well, have you watched anything or done anything? Uh, I've been my, making my way through Hyoka. Again? Or are you reading the books? No, no, no. No, you're just watching it again. I did start uh, reading Lord of the Rings again because I'm bored. I'm going to say something controversial. You want to hear it? Which is, you're wrong. I think the Cimmerillion is better. That's not right. I mean, it's just not as well written because it's just not. (laughs) It wasn't finished. There's lots of interesting things that happen in the Cimmerillion. I wish he had gotten to finish it, but... I like the way it's written better. Not really. It's not properly written it's, it's mythology just a bunch of his ideas I like it yeah i mean it's it's just a bunch of his ideas that he kind of just sp- yeah spewed it's world out. building through short stories i like it also you know what it doesn't have tom bombadil ah uh, you know actually i think it does at one point. yeah he's in there like for a second a <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I, th- I think it does tbh but i can skip it real quick instead of well i guess in lord of the rings i can just skip two chapters and be done with it which is what i ultimately did to get through the thing well, you know what I've been up to? I don't know. A couple things. One, playing tons of Mahjong. Because, guess what? I'm going to be playing in the Anime Evo tournament here in two weeks. Oh? Yeah. Normally, it's like a big gaming convention where people just play a bunch of anime-related games. Like uh, sure. Dragon Ball Z Fighters, Melty Blood, sure. that type of stuff. Yeah. Well, this time they're having Mahjong Soul for some reason. So, like, yeah. well, well, hot, know. hot damn. I'm in. I don't know how it'll work, but if you can stream it and you see a guy named Tsunami, that's me. You did it. You made it to the big leagues. I am in the big leagues. Look at me. Playing with my anime girl avatar, because that's all that's available. Uh, I have watched a couple shows. Not many. Literally two shows. Yeah. ReZero and something else? ReZero Season 2 and Decadence. Oh, how, how was that? Well, I just watched all three episodes that are out. Like, okay, and. right before I came here. Uh, I and. believe we originally read the synopsis and thought, this sounds a lot like uh, Made in Abyss, a little bit. Uh, no. Sounded a little interesting. I thought it sounded like, uh, what's it? Uh, the one with the sna- what with the snails. Ah, so you say no gargantia. That's the one. Yeah. Uh, both of those are wildly inaccurate. Oh, so what's it like? That's hard to say. Fair enough. How would I describe decadence without spoiling the hook? Because the hook is actually buried. It's not buried. It's it's in the second episode. Like, it's the intro to the second episode. It is not what you expect. I'd say just watch it. Okay. But is it good enough? So it is good enough to be watched. I mean, it's only three episodes. That's hard to say. It's... Well, do you want to watch more after three episodes? It's not that hard. I may have do you to, watch wish to watch more, more? but I don't know okay. if that's because I think it's good or because there's nothing else to watch that's new. I mean, that's fair. Oh, so there's but. that. It's not competing against much. I mean, the only alternatives are ReZero Season 2 or I guess Rent-A-Girlfriend, which is a thing. That... Uh, no, no guns, life. No oh, life, yeah. no guns. Two guns, two life. I forgot that was airing. Dang it. Yeah, I need to catch up on that. My bad. Anyway, the, the first episode of Decadence just sort of sets the stage of, oh, there's a girl. Uh, it's very blue gender-esque. There are lots of weird bugs running around. Humans uh, are on the verge of extinction. You got to kill the bugs, sure. etc. cetera. Um, and then in the second episode, everything that you thought the show was going to be, just throw it out the window because that's not it at all. It turns out all the bugs are cute anime girls. No, but they are cute. I solve it for reasons. Nah. I solved it. You, you did. They are not cute anime girls. This isn't the Beast Girl Doctor show. Oh, uh, <laughs> not Beasters, but the other one, the BMS or whatever it is, BSM. No, that that's another show. That that was the one where uh, they're they're all Aero Stars or something. Is that what it was? 
Oh, oh no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 the Beast Doctor. Yeah, no, not that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see. There's a lot of etchy shows this this season. So if you're into that, good that's for you. the only but thing that's left. There's nothing for me to watch other than season twos and this bug show. Anyway, yeah, that's about it. That that's all I got because there's all right. nothing happening. Baseball, etc. Yeah. It's like my life is on repeat, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, you want to talk about a show where a guy's life is on repeat? I was about to say, what? so what? how do you think about things regarding Zero? Oh, Free Zero? Haha. <laughs> free Zero. Re-Zero. Re-Zero. Yeah, if you don't know what Re-Zero is, you're in the dark, and we're kind of late to the game on this one anyway. It's two years old. Are we? It's not good. That's no, okay. Wow. So last time, I think I told you that you would probably like it more than you thought. So, hmm. before we get into the elevator pitch, I want to know, was I correct? Do I like it more than I thought? Thought it, you I thought would it was like going to be trash, but okay trash. Yeah, no, it's trash, but okay trash. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I liked it about as much as I thought I would. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe if we're being generous slightly more than I thought, but really not a whole lot. Because every time I'm like, okay, I could enjoy this. Something happens in it, and I'm like, yeah, but that kind of sucks, though. <laughs> you will get that. It is an isekai. I mean... I mean, maybe if it had characters that were good i would enjoy it there are a couple characters they just don't show up very often are there there are a couple okay what's what what would you say the elevator pitch is for re-zero and i'll give my interpretation of what it is oh um it's a it's a it's a time loop show in an isekai world it is it's more of a time loop show than an isekai which is the only saving grace unfortunately it muddy it mucks up its freaking time loop stories with stupid isekai bullshit <laughs> I didn't feel like there was a ton of stupid isekai bullshit. There's a ton of stupid isekai characters, which that is, is that is a fair point. Yes, but I don't think you get the normal isekai plot tropes, at least. That's fair. So the story you follows, get the stupid characters. follows our boy Subaru. He's abducted from Earth for reasons hitherto unknown. Taken to this world. Where he's just a normal guy. Do we guy. have a name for it? I don't think so. I don't think we do. Maybe? There he he bumps into a candidate for king. Amelia. Candidate for goddess. Goddess. No, nah, I think it's just king. Yeah, it's just king. But, and, you know, uh, candidate for goddess. He, he falls madly in love with her for... Because she's hot, basically. Uh, she was nice, but yeah, mostly because she's hot and he is a simp. He is a simp. Uh, th that that's really what th what it is. It's all you need is. Simp. I mean, th that's the whole problem. <laughs> is Subaru is awful. Oh, we'll get to For him in a second. Anyway, multiple reasons he, he finds awful. out because he dies a lot that he can die a he lot. Does. <laughs> and he can die a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, his no, power. He finds out because he can die a lot because he can die a lot. Yeah. My take on the show is I think it's interesting that we have an isekai show where. The power that the guy has is out of his control, and otherwise, besides this one trait, he's just a normal dude. Now, you may disagree, uh, let, let, and, and I do as well. Schlub. Can he, we go with schlub? He is a schlub. Please. Okay, good. Let's establish that he is a schlub. Now, people react to him in unbelievable ways. That's true. And that's, that's going to happen. It's, you still have some isekai elements, right? But yeah, but he doesn't but have any special powers. And that, he that's doesn't have... It's not a power trip fantasy. It's still a harem fantasy uh, for well, some reason, yeah, but yeah. it's not a power trip fantasy. No, no, I, w I would say that. I would say that that's fairly accurate. So your mileage is going to vary, but if you can approach it with the fact that, you know, there are worse things I could be watching, and if I can turn my brain off, fair. it's at least somewhat fun, then it's fine. I enjoyed it. The time loop puzzles are good. I enjoyed it. I like I would most of the characters. I find them endearing and entertaining. They can be. It, many of the characters have modes in which they are good, but then they'll slowly slide into like 
Whoa. I'm not going to fault you for that one. And I would say that it has one one plot that it runs through as if it is a program. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back and does it again, which I assume is because, you know, they're light novels, I think. So I'm sure that they, he just uses the same plot every light novel, just with a different time loop puzzle. So, I mean, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, there are the, the show covers three of the I think currently there are five arcs out. OK, OK, good. I was worried that you was going to be like 12. I'm like, OK. And I will give it this. It's world that it sets up is very interesting, and I want to know more about it. Unfortunately, our boy Subaru. Simpleton, Subaru, Simperu, doesn't give a shit about it. <laughs> and like on one hand, like I get, I get it because it's like kind of funny that like his power is that he doesn't give a shit when all these people freak out about stuff. But on the other hand, it's like I want my character to care about the mystery of the world because I want to explore it as the viewer. Mm hmm. He is very uh, tunnel focused on Amelia, and that's it. Yeah. So to give some perspective, Arc 1 covers the first book. That's when he shows up in the, the world. Arc 2, which I can't even remember at the, at the, at the moment. Arc 2 covers uh, the next two books, and then Arc 3 covers the next five books. So, and they just keep going up from there. Like, Arc 4 has oh, five or so, six. So there are a bazillion books. There are a bazillion books. Right now, there's 23 books and six arcs. Oh, good lord. Yeah. That's too many. It's a lot of books. A lot of books. Especially since everything works the same way. Anyway, I enjoyed it to an extent. But if I were going to put it on a tier of isekais, I put it, or at least on the tier of isekai quartet, which has five shows in it. I think it's, it's next to the bottom. Bottom is Konosuba because it knows that it's crap. Well, here's the thing about Konosuba, though. Like, that, like it knows it's shit, but like it, it also knows what it's doing. So you could make an argument that, that ReZero is the bottom. Uh, yeah, Konosuba isn't trying to pretend something that it's not. But I think ReZero is sometimes. I think, I think ReZero thinks it's better than it is. But not as bad as some other shows that I have seen. Oh, yeah. No. Some shows, like, way think they're super better than they are. Where ReZero is... Overall, I, I don't even remember what I gave it, but if I had to do it off the top of my head again, I'd give it a solid B-, minus, probably. You can't do that. You give it a number scale. You can't, give it, you can't change it to ba maybe, fe uh, uh, maybe feels B-. minus. You know what? I can do whatever I want. This is our show. I mean, fair enough. I can, I can do anything. This is my life. I'm living my hashtag best life. What are you doing? Trying to make this not have a B minus. I'm actually looking up what I what I gave it. I gave it. Oh, I gave it an eight. A five or a six. <laughs> an eight. Holy <laughs> shit! It's not an eight. Now, <clears throat> I would give it a six. I would not give it your eight. Some context. Good lord! What have you done? Some context. I'm gonna save <laughs> myself a little bit here. All uh, right. Let's hear this. Let's 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 see. You walk yourself out of this one. I, I watched this. How are you getting this. out of this tar pit? I watched this when the quarantine started. Okay, well, fair enough. <laughs> that's that's legitimate. I'll buy that. <laughs> I was in a dark uh, place. Okay, we were all in a. It was all an interesting time. Okay, this gave that's, me some solace and something stupid to watch. Okay, okay. Would you like to? Would you like to go again? One one more time. Do you, uh, you want to? Do, do you wish to renumber grade this? Um. Let me throw out my six, mm. which is watchable and okay no nah, i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a seven all right it's, a it's low seven, eight, but it's it's a seven I, if it's like below a 7.5 i'll allow it it's it, it's entertaining is this is still the thing the production quality is there but if you're looking for high art high art this is not it is not no it's not so i guess we'll go into spoilers we haven't talked any spoilers yet good for us that he dies. He dies a lot. That happens all the time. He does die a Every lot. three yeah, episodes, basically. Just about. So, there are way too many characters to talk about. Yeah. But let's talk about, oh, at least the first four, five, I guess. All right. I mean, the main two. Let's talk about Subaru. Come on. He's awful. He, I don't like him. He's not good. Here's, here's the issue with Subaru. All right. So, here, here's, here's one. Here's here, your here, issue here, with Subaru. Go for it. Here's an issue with Subaru that it has nothing to do with the way his character is written. This is a meta problem with, with Subaru. Okay. He is a genre savvy character, correct? Yes. Correct. How long does it get him to figure out that he's a fucking time looper? 
uh, longer he's than He's died like 12 be. times before he's like, oh, I'm on time loop. And once he figures out he's in a time loop, he has no idea how to solve time loop puzzles. And it's like, you are a genre savvy character. You can't do that. You can't just be like, lol, I got isekai'd and then be like, oh, how, how does time loops work? I can't justify I don't, that one. I can't justify it at all. It's very upsetting. And that's just, that's a that's a meta problem with him as a character. If I'm going to play, I will, I'll play devil's advocate this whole episode. OK, so which is there's really no excuse for this one. This is just a bad one. Your your main point is is correct. Uh, it takes him way too long to figure out that he's in a time loop, given that he is genre conscious. However, mm-hmm. in especially past the first two arcs uh, where he gets head over heels involved with like political intrigue crap. He's just a dude. No, no, like, like I get it. But at the same time, it's like, so you're in a time loop. Step one, find out everything you can about everything. This but is he true. never gets to step one. What, what tends to happen is in the next, in the, in the loop in which he solves everything, it's just like, he now has all the information because he remembered everything from his previous loops perfectly. And it's like, well, okay, I mean, yes, that's the solution to most time loop puzzles, but you can't just have him do that out of nowhere. He is stupid. But that's what it does. He's stupid, though. He's, he's just a normal guy, right? He, but he's not so stupid he's clever. He's just dumb. He's a simpleton. He's just a normal guy, which gets him into trouble, right? And he has no guarantee that the time loop always functions the same way. Now, it does, because we're the audience, we can see that. Well, but yeah, he, he but come on. He, he should know without, within a reasonable amount. Now, here, here's the argument against this is that he has to know, because later on in the series, he's just like, well, I'll just put myself in danger anyway. Mm-hmm. So one of my big problems with this is that, like, if he, he knows that the time loops happen, yeah. it's extremely unempathetic of him as a character to be like, well, I'll just wipe everyone else's memories, even though they've had a pretty good amount of memories by putting myself in danger. Ooh, you're going the ethical route. I like it. Well, he's bad at this. <laughs> He's just bad at a lot of these Man, things. Man, when you put it that way, yeah, he's kind of a monster. He does it several times. Sometimes it's like, fine, we're just like, okay, it's a stopgap. But other times he's just like, well, I'll just run into danger. And if I die, then the time loop will happen. I'll take care of it. It's like, yeah, but then all of the things that have happened to all of your friends gets erased. Well, don't worry. You're not going to like the first episode of season two where he does that the first episode of season two. No, I know. So, but again, it's just like you're trying to erase other people's like things. It's like, this is... Yeah, I can't justify that you, one at you, all. You like, realize these things are happening and you're doing them. Where it's like, that, that's when these things get a little shady. It is a little shady, but our heroes in All You Need Is Kill did that constantly until they figured out the time puzzle. Yes, but it's very, very short and he, he feels remorse about it to some degree. And it's not an emotional show. So one thing that I do like about ReZero is it does do a very good job of showing you how like emotionally taxing this type of time loop is. He because is again, pretty damaged by, he's, by the third He's arc. forming bonds with these people, and then he remembers them, but they don't. Mm-hmm. Right? But then, he's willing to, like, have that happen. That's what bugs me. Like, in All You Need of Kill, this, this problem is never really brought up. It's not, it's not the focus of how All You Need is Kill works. Yeah, they're just trying to survive. I get it. It's brought up sort of, like, once, and, and then sort of dropped with but, him. Okay, and, um, Here, here's the thing, though. But in this, Subaru, like, knows that this is a big problem and it's, like, emotionally damaging, yet he's very willing to make others have to go through it. And it's like, that's, that's bad of you. So I'll put a pin in the other thing I was going to say. Let's, let's go down this, this path for a bit. Is it sure. actually ethically wrong if you're stuck in a time loop, hypothetically speaking, learn all the, the information, which is what you want him to do. Yeah. Knowing that everybody else may suffer horrifically if you have knowledge that once you've gathered all the information, you can reset and they have never experienced those things. Because yeah, those future least... selves of them no longer exist. Now, you mm-hmm. could make an argument that they're all dead and you killed them. Yeah. But you can't have it both ways. You can't, on one hand, say, I want this guy. No, I can, because I can say that I want, I want this character to be consistent one way or the other, right? Either he has to be the, the ruthless bastard or he needs to be the empathetic character. Instead, they try to have it both ways, but never have the character wrestle with the choice. Uh, hmm. That's the difference. I do like that you brought up that he doesn't wrestle with the choice. I'll agree if with that. If he wrestles with the choice, 
I then it's allowed because then that's the that's the theme and the idea of the show. Okay, I'll go uh, with that. But, but I I cannot agree to say that he has to be one way or the other and he has to be consistent because well, he is a normal I mean, guy he, and I feel he, like he if, doesn't have to. But I mean that that's how characters work. If any normal person was put in that situation, they themselves would be conflicted. I mean, depending on which loop they're in, right? Or yeah. even which iteration. Yeah, but he's he's never com- he's never really conflicted. He's about, never really like, conflicted. Inflicting this on others, even though he. He does realize and internalize the problem himself. Yeah. I'm going to walk back to my pen. I think one of the things is his power is given to him. I can't say by who, because that's not even in season two yet. Uh, but he I'm does, pretty sure it's the witch, but I mean, I'm not he, read. He's given his power by a intelligent being yeah, who I is so. monitoring him. That that much you find out in season one. Yeah, he, he, he for sure, for sure has the aspect of pride. So, the witch aspect of pride or whatever it's called. So, he somehow cannot control the power. And even if it's just, it's not even a, um, just a, an uncaring power that he has and acts upon him. It's, a, it's another consciousness, right? So, he can't, he can't predict it. Now, that being said, that brings up the, the main problem I have with Subaru, which is he keeps succeeding, but he almost never actively seeks out resolution. He sort of stumbles his way into everything. So the plot yeah. kind of just happens to him in a way, eventually, that he succeeds at it. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem with many isekai, right? Is that somehow they're both a power fantasy, but yet the active character is, the protagonist character is still very passive and that things just get solved sort of for him. Now, I'm, I'm even going to walk that back a little bit. There are points in the first season where he does do like a big heroic thing. He, he puts himself in, in danger or other points aside, he, he strikes out, but those are so few and far between the show presents those very specific times where he is being a good guy. He is being heroic as like, Oh look, he's, he's done a thing. He has grown and then immediately walks the whole thing back in the next episode. Oh, constantly. That's my big problem with him is that he there will be so the way the show works is that he he has an emotional growth right before the solution arc, right? Uh, In every single arc, but it's in every single arc. So in order to repeat that story beat, uh, once we switch over to a new set of loop puzzles, he's now back at square one. Yeah. And it's like, you can't come on. (laughs) Yeah, I think Subaru is not the protagonist we need in this show. No, I think the all. world and the other char- most of the other characters are good, and I'll stand by that. Uh, I, but it needs another main character. They're interesting characters. They're not necessarily good characters, as in they're not always well as well written as they should be. But the character concepts are fairly solid all around. Yeah, well, except the next main character, which is Amelia. She's eh, well, boring. She, she could be better. She's a little boring. Like what is what is her appeal? She's, She's hot. Too nice. She's hot and she's too nice and she's too subservient. That's that's it. Now, there are reasons why she is like that, and they are understandable reasons. She's had a traumatic past. Who hasn't? And the entire world literally hates her. That's not even an exaggeration. Everybody yeah. hates her. She is under a lot of pressure and it takes a lot of courage to just do what she does. OK, I can go with that. But in the house where she lives, in the Roswell mansion, and with Subaru, she's still just boring. Yeah. Yep. I would like to see more out of her. I think that she is a character that could have some depth to it, and I think maybe if we got an internal monologue, she would be better. But yeah. She is stunted in a meta sense because we have to have Subaru being the one saving the day all the time. Because he's the, yes, he's the main is- character. Which does a disservice to many of the other characters. Mm-hmm. When it's actually more interesting if he kind of uses his power once or twice to let somebody else sort of get their second chance, even if he can't, like, tell them that. That would be cool. I would like it's that. It's a much more interesting thing. The thing is, you, you have a very good premise, but the person playing with the premise, i.e. The, the author of the work, is not interested in doing the most interesting things you could even start to do with said premise. Mm-hmm. Look, I like time loop stories, and when time loop stories are <laughs> mediocre, you get upset. Oh, by the way, have you seen Happy Death Day? Happy Death Day. That sounds familiar. You should watch that movie. It's a very good time loop movie. Very, very good. 
That movie is how you do a character like Subaru, but do him well. Oh. No, I have not seen this. I should watch this. Watch, watch, watch that. Watch that movie. It's very, okay. very good. Well, walking back to Amelia real quick. Okay. I feel like my problem with Subaru of uh, being just a passive participant in everything, even though he has like two or three times where he's actually heroic, even though it's, it's retconned in the next episode, Amelia is literally just a passive participant in everything. Yeah. It's not like, oh, she's just written that way. It's no, that's where her character is. Roswell's manipulating her. The country's manipulating her. The witches are manipulating her. Everybody's manipulating her. Puck Parley is manipulating her too. She has no yeah, agency in this show. Yeah, I don't think Puck's manipulating her, but yeah, sure. You but can make yeah, the no, argument. I don't think so, but you could totally make the argument because it fits everything else. She has no agency. Yeah, no, that's, that's legit. The only choice she makes is, I guess I'll like this dude who's the only guy who's ever paid me any attention that wasn't, I'm going to slit your throat. Which I don't yeah. think is a solid foundation for a lasting relationship. Well, it's not even that. It's more like this is someone who doesn't understand the sort of dynamics racial dynamics of this world and therefore just treats me as a as a normie yeah so like that that's 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 interesting that's an interesting start to a relationship but yeah yeah amelia's there now let's talk about my favorite do you know who my favorite well i've got a couple that that rank up there i've got two favorite characters you want to guess who they are are they rim and ram no no one of them is ram. my two favorite characters rim gets rim gets done fucking dirty and i'm very upset so is most of the internet. I don't actually like Rim that much. I think I liked her in the second arc. Oh, she's great in the second arc, but then she gets an extreme case of badass decay and is just all miserable in the third arc. Yeah. Like you were super cool upsetting. and super badass and it was really and cool to see you grow. And then she's just like, well, I'm in love with Subaru now. And you're like, okay. Okay, but you're still a demon child with cool powers, right? I'm oh, in love with Subaru. No, I'll do anything for Subaru now. <laughs> My character is now just, I'm in love with Subaru. Yeah, she got done dirty. By Very Subaru dirty. and by the show. But my favorite character is actually Ram. I like her. Ram's cool. I actually like Beto. Beto is my second. I'm a big fan of Beto. <laughs> Biako and, and Ram are my two favorites. Yeah, no, that, that's legit. I, I'm here for Biako. Any scene with Ram in it, I, I love it because she brings the kind of self-awareness the show really needs, but she's not in the show much. Also, let's think about this. What do both those characters have in common? They hate Subaru. They're mean to Subaru. Yeah. And constantly mock him. As, and that's and what works. So. It's fine. Because <laughs> he, des he deserves it all. Yeah. Because he's bad. He's a bad character. Now, if I had to pick between Biako and Ram, who is probably the better character within the show, like Ram is great. I think she's hilarious, but she's not as interesting as, as Biako is. biako has got a whole thing going on. It's because Biako, uh, Ram's story has already finished by the time the story starts. So like her backstory is really unique and interesting, but her, her story arc is basically over. Mm -hmm. And as far as first season goes, we might get some cool stuff in second but Beto definitely has more interesting story going forward. Oh, yeah. And, and I mean, she's as old or older than Puck is. So yeah. she's probably got some stories to tell. But she's trapped in a yeah. library for unknown reasons. Well, she's trapped in the house. But mostly the library. Which, if I were her, I'd stay in there, too, because it's crazy outside that door. Is there any other characters really worth talking about? Mm. No... I, mean, I guess I can talk about one of the other things that's very irritating is how, like, go for it. The world's fairly well put together, but then you have, like, isekai bullshit. So there are characters that just don't make any sense. Like, all of the candidates for king are awful. Like, no one would be like, yeah, we should make any of these people king. No one would do that. And I know there's, like, some stupid magic blah, blah, blah reason. But no, no, it's dumb. <laughs> No, you're right. They do not explain that. It's you have to have this crest thing, which is the whole point and of the first all, arc. They're like all awful. And they're that's all it. awful. You have to have the crest thing. What does that have well, to do with it? Well, and they're anything? unrealistically it's not really, awful. Not really mentioned. But yeah, just all the candidates for king are all unrealistically awful. Because yeah, they're like mm, isekai tropey characters rather than like real world No, one of them characters. Okay. I don't remember her name because oh, they're all forgettable. Yeah. But the green haired one. She is the only one that you'd look at and be like, you know what? Oh, yeah. She's leader material. I like yeah. you. But yeah, you're right. All the other ones are. No, even. Just don't make any sense. Even Amelia doesn't make any sense. 
It barely, yeah. At least she's ultra realistic, and you're like, okay, well, I could see why, but also... Yeah, but why her? Yeah. Why not yeah. someone else? Uh, let's talk about the, the arcs. So there are only three in season okay. one, which is what we're talking about. I got it. All right, let me sum up the arc. Okay, arc, the arc Every single last of the arc is... Huh? Before he loops the first time... Yeah. There are some isekai world-building hijinks. During the second loop, he is confused as to why he died. Yeah. Third loop... He is upset because he is an unloved and useless schlub. And then in loop four, he realizes everyone loves him because he's a useless schlub. And then he finds the solution. I would say that with one caveat, usually in loop three, something very traumatic happens, which then he somehow seems to forget every time. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. But we are shown in arc four that he has been affected so every, when he is loved by everybody because he's a useless schlub, then he appreciates it. But then the next arc starts and all is forgotten. Yeah. At least character wise. And the other thing I would say is that usually the solution arc goes on too long. Uh, the third one did. The third arc did. But I, I feel like they one. didn't. I feel like they did an OK job in the third arc with splitting it up by having kind of a sub loop puzzle Mm -hmm. and i think i think if more of them did that it would be okay but like the second arc the first half of the second arc is really really good and then like the back half of it is like why is this here none of this is needed we 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 solved it we went through the arc already why are we still going so let's talk about each arc so first arc is when he arrives he, he discovers his power right and then he's killed by a crazy lady that likes axes a lot and likes to gut people yeah um, all because Amelia's crest has been stolen by uh, another candidate for king, because the thief is obviously another candidate for king. That's beside the point. Uh, and then he ends up living at the Roswell mansion and end first arc. That's basically it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really just the setup, which mm-hmm. it's fine. It, it gets all the the points across, I thought, and fairly well. Uh, agreed. So I don't really have anything to quibble with about. In the first arc. Did you? No. No, the first arc's fairly well done. Uh, I mean, there's a little bit of, like, anime bullshit in it, but it's nothing, like, egregious. The so second second major arc, um, there's a sub-arc in it, which is the Rim and Ram story, which was good. Yeah. Probably the best character-building moments in the show thus far, I think. But it all took place in flashbacks. And then a battle. Yeah. Uh, but the real major plot thread of, of arc two is the whole candidacy for for king stuff all the politics is that arc two that's more like pre arc three that's why i said it was the rim ram thing is like sub arc two it has nothing to do with nah, amelia nah. so blah no 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 so arc, arc arc two is him trying to solve the time loop puzzle of why he's dying in the mansion and then killing the things in the woods that that's arc two and then arc three has like a prologue a time loop puzzle and then okay yeah and then a bunch of stuff that's kind of a mess and then the end which is good that- no 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 you're right arc arc two is is rim and rim tries to kill him a lot and then they go kill yeah. things in the woods yeah yes it's the go thing go kill things in the woods that doesn't really need to be there and is fairly uninteresting even if like the stuff we learn about rim and ram as characters is interesting i would say them was the most character building part of the show and i stand by that statement i i think that was very well done it it got a lot of backstory and flashbacks which is the best but what are you gonna do and it dovetailed very nicely with what was going on in the present it worked Mm -hmm. it was fine now my problem is uh the first half of arc three oh yeah where first off subaru is a complete moron and you want to hit him with a big stick well you get your what you want because he is beaten with a big stick oh, that's true he is he thinks that his his arrogance so far has worked wonders for him so he just waltzes straight into the candidacy for king uh ceremony and just starts making it a total fool of himself and because he declares himself amelia's knight guess what now she's tarnished good job subaru so, and here's another thing that's really irritating, right? It's sort of the moral of the fir- of the prologue of this arc is Subaru needs to learn to let Amelia do things on her own, and he needs to learn to do what she says. Yeah, stop white knighting. And the solution to this is for him to do whatever he wants. And again, 
very upsetting. <laughs> That's not how this is supposed to go. He is supposed to learn his lesson and realize that, oh, the solution to this puzzle is actually probably not to do anything, and things will kind of work out on their own. That's where I thought it was going, because that was the th that's the theme. The theme of this arc was do what Amelia has told you to do and trust that she is competent. But instead, it's Subaru does what he wants and everything is solved. Which doesn't make any sense, because he, he's only been in this world for like, at least from all the other characters' perspectives, he's been here like a month, maybe? Yeah. They've been at this for years, all this Kennedy C stuff and... Roswell training Amelia to be a candidate, and blah, blah, blah. There's lots of politics that they're aware of. Subaru's an idiot. And instead of giving Amelia agency for once, he just does whatever he wants. And he white knights himself out of the situation. Now, granted, the the wind whale battle was was pretty cool. See, that, the that part. Guy. Yeah, that whole back half of that thing was awesome. And the butler was pretty rad. He is very rad. That being said, <laughs> that being said, it doesn't it does not follow it. It doesn't work with the pre-established theme of the arc and where the character was going. Now, I do think that it's worth two scenes. One is where Beetlegeist actually captures Subaru and kills him at least once. I think he kills him twice, which is delightful. Uh, so I I really do like the deaths in this. Not only are they thematic, but they're very interesting because it's kind of a, an all roads lead to fail, mm -hmm. which is always interesting in a time loop thing, which is, again, why I thought that the thematically and the solution is actually just leave them alone for a bit and it actually works out. It's your meddling that's f***ing everything <laughs> up. But we didn't do that because the show's not great. The other scene, which I think the show promptly forgot about, which but I think is very important is when Amelia actually dies and it's Subaru's fault and Puck yeah. goes ballistic. Like, yeah. there's a lot in those 10 minutes which surprised the hell out of me watching it. I was sitting there going, whoa, did not expect any of that. I didn't expect Amelia to die. I didn't expect Puck to freak out. And I didn't expect Puck to kill Subaru. And I didn't expect well, Puck to world. be a ridiculous... Yeah, I guess he does destroy the world too. Because Puck's sort of thing is, is if Amelia dies, then he will destroy the world. Which I had no Which foreshadowing pretty for. Pretty interesting. That Which is interesting. Is interesting. So for 10 minutes, the show was suddenly like, whoa, this is a lot of world building. And then we forgot it. We, yeah. we're, we're past that yeah. now. Well, because he, the, the, the author seems to care more about Subaru's fun times than exploring the mystery of the world that he has set up. It's like, okay. If, when one of these things is interesting and the other one I can get in Sword Art Online. I, I'm going to take the puck scene as an example of how the show could have been written better. You don't have to change a whole lot, turns out. You could take, like, the puck scene, which was traumatic, both for Subaru, obviously, and for me, the audience. It revealed many things, and puck's freaking terrifying now. From that point forward, every time Subaru beats puck, what should happen is he treats him very warily. Because now he knows that puck is more than just a flying little cat who has magic orbs and stuff and is cute. He's a freaking yeah. world ending beast who needs yep. lots of respect. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. No. It should. That should be an interesting dynamic where Puck doesn't know why Subaru is now treating him weird and they have to form a, a deeper bond to get through that, even though they don't interact a ton already. You could have a dynamic like that. I'm a, I'm a little on the fence of whether or not the spirits actually know that things are getting time looped. Uh, I, I, I have a sneaking suspicion they do, but they may have a sneaking suspicion as well. But I'm, I don't we don't know. But the point, yeah, the we point don't know. is, this is speculation. The, the things that happen in those loops need to persist through Subaru yeah. beyond Subaru just gets the girl at the end. And Subaru is sad for a while in the middle of every arc. Yeah, just him him being depicted as sad does not really justify everything else. He has to internalize it and it needs to be carried forward. Mm -hmm. Well, OK, so we, we've ranted about it for, for quite a bit. Are you going to watch season two? Yeah, I'm already watching season two. I'm There's nothing else on. I'm surprised. <laughs> do, do you remember when we started with? And, you know, they did something clever in the very first episode where it's just like, oh, now he has a consequence. He can't erase. It's like, well, that's interesting. But again, then we just kind of don't worry about it, which is really kind of weird. He doesn't seem to, like, be upset that. There's now a consequence he can't reset. And you're like, well, that's odd. No, I think 
I think he is. I mean, he's very bad at showing anything. He's still fighting oh, yeah. to get Rim back. What I don't like is the, the new characters that have shown up. Are they the pride ones? Or the gluttony ones? Or both? I don't remember. Yeah, they're a little Full Metal Alchemist, and you're like... Oh, they are, okay. aren't they? And it's like, and it's good in Full Metal Alchemist, because that's the kind of show it is. It's a shonen, but you can't just have shonen villains show up in your time loop isekai. Too late. They're here. Yeah. To fulfill like, okay, something. That's a little dumb. And they show up, like, immediately, too, and you're just like, really? You're just throwing, like, three of them at us immediately? Yep. And what doesn't make any sense is the whole... Well, the one can eat... Your name, or he can eat your soul. He ha if he eats one, one set of circumstances happen. If he eats the other, another set happens. And if he does both, then he can erase you entirely. Like, you could have hinted at this before. Yeah, that should have been better foreshadowed. And also, when that happens to Rim, he doesn't, like, immediately go to Biako and is just like, let's research in your library how to fix this. He's just like, no, let's just go do this other thing. Biako needs to slap some sense into that boy. Yeah. Instead of just kicking him know. out. Although, if I were her, I would also just kick him out. Yeah. Which is what she does. Yeah, I just don't know. I'm going to keep watching it for my girl Ram and my girl Biako. I don't hold out much hope that it's going to be, like, good and stuff. I don't think it's but... going to improve much. I think, or at least Subaru isn't. I think the world building is going to be more interesting because we already have gotten a witch. A bona fide witch yes. that everyone's terrified of. And it turns out she's basically just Aqua from Konosuba. So, yeah, I, don't I don't know. I like the world building aspects of it. And I like some of the characters. Yeah, I just don't like I just wish, Subaru. I just wish he would care about the world he's, <laughs> he's building. It's just a point where it's just like, you, you're never actually going to explore these. You're never going to answer these mysteries. So why, why am I going to keep watching? I think he plans on it. Now, whether he remembers all of the mysteries that he has set up, I have no idea. After six billion books. But he... At least from what I've read on wikis and such, he does have the ending planned out. I don't think he plans on bleaching the thing. Yeah. Now, whether that's in the next five volumes or if it's the next 50, I have no idea. But he, yeah, he see, has my problem. He has a thing. I mean, this is my problem with shonens too, where it's just like at a certain point, like if you haven't gotten your story told in X amount of time, then like what are you just sort of spinning your wheels? And eventually everybody loses interest. I don't think he's doing that. But he is in danger of going down that path if he's not careful. I don't know. Your mileage may vary. It's entertaining. Is it good? Yeah. And again, like the, the, time, the time loop puzzles are like intriguing. You just wish that somebody who could solve time loop puzzles would be the one doing them. One small aspect I thought was nice is, you know, they made a whole show. A whole show that has multiple seasons now of a dude that isekais with his cell phone, and he is a god. In this show, he also isekais, and he has his cell phone, but you know what it's good for? Showing off, oh, look, it's a magic you've never seen before. I hope the battery doesn't die, oh shit. And that's it. That's all uh, it's good for. And, and, its first ending theme, when it ever actually plays it, is baller. Yeah. It, it sticks Helix, right? That's the really good one. Who did the the music for this show i feel like it's the same guy that made abyss let me look yeah no it is yeah it's uh it's Styx helix which is pretty baller not gonna lie oh it's myth and Roid. yeah i love myth and yeah Roid. of course it's myth and Roid. yeah yeah no they're good and again like Styx helix is legit baller so if you don't know who myth and Roid is they also did uh overlord they do every isekai opening and ending they also did i think um tanya one or two of the ones from Yojo Senki. Yeah, they, <laughs> they did Yojo Senki. They opening. did uh, two from Overlord. Yeah, they did Jingo Jungle as well. So, well, with that, uh, what do you want to watch next time? That's an excellent question. It is. If you are interested, there is a show I've had my eye on for a couple couple days. A Gretzko. We've. I've. Of course, I've seen a Gretzko. I haven't seen a Gretzko. It's short. Is it? Annie would definitely watch it again. Yeah, because it's like 15 minute episodes or something. I was told the Gretzko is really good that it's a cartoon for people over 25. Absolutely. It's very similar to um, Wotakoi. Uh, Wotakoi. Only Sanrio. It's so it's Wotakoi by Sanrio. Hmm. I could be down for watching that if you're up. No, Gretzko solid. OK, let's watch yeah, that. No, it's super short. It's really easy to watch. 
Like, do you say super short, like the episodes are short, or the series? Yeah, is short? the episodes are short. Well, a little bit of both. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's all on Netflix. It is on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, are we gonna watch the Christmas special as well? Yes. It is really cute. Okay, let's let's do that. Let's watch Animals at Work. Okay. On Netflix. I'll, I'll watch Agresco again. It's cute. The animation's not great, but I mean, it's just designed to be a cute little show. Okay. Let's do that. Well, we'll watch uh, Animals at Work after two more weeks of working, which is, yeah, that's how this quarantine is going, isn't it? To relax, I'm gonna watch other people work. I mean, yeah, it's kind of nice to watch other people work for once. All right, see you guys next time. All right, bye.